In this video, we're just going to summarize our learning by taking a look at the visual that we uh, for hybridization in the uh, in the slide deck here. So uh, this visual just summarizes the different types of hybridization that you might see and shows you how to draw the hybridization diagrams as well as define the important terms you need to know um, for the process of hybridization and electron promotion. Uh, so we can see SP hybridization is made from an S and a P um, orbital coming together, uh, and that makes two uh, two um, um, hybridized orbitals, the sp and sp here. When you draw them together, um, combined here, um, that makes a 180 degree bond angle. Um, you can also, and this is how you would show that promotion process. You would just can combine this s with this p here, um, and then the remaining um, p's would be unhybridized. Uh, and here's the sp intermediate in energy to this s and this p. So in between the energy level of this s and this p here, roughly in the middle there. Um, and then this, typically, you would use this uh, to make double and triple bonds later on, and we'll learn that in, pre in future lessons, the unhybridized ones anyways. Um, so you should be able to do examples of uh, SP hybridization um, and show that process. So if you can practice that by doing BCL2, uh, show the energy level diagram, show the hybridization process, um, and show the mixing. Um, and then as well as all the overlaps, then you're in some pretty good shape. Uh, you should be able to illustrate that with an orbital representation drawing uh, with the uh, overlap of the um, SP hybridization with the, uh, with the orbitals of CL and CL here and uh, understand how this translates to a linear shape. Um, and then you can do other examples such as drawing BEH2 um, and showing its orbital representation uh, and again, here we can see the linear shape of the SP hybridization. Uh, you should also understand SP2 hybridization. Um, so uh, there's some great examples to practice in this little uh, slide deck here. Um, but essentially, that's where you have an S and then two P orbitals come together. And it makes these three orbitals here. These are called SP2 orbitals. When you connect them together, they look like this. And that gives you the 120 degree bond angle that you see with things that are sp2 hybridized uh, and to do that you have one s one p coming together and they'd be at some intermediate level between the s and the p here and then the last one is a uh, is a remaining unhybridized p orbital so you just have these three here um, and so a great example is bcl3 and you should be able to demonstrate the hybridization and promotion process um, of bcl3 uh, using this uh, this slide deck over here and also by drawing as well. So if you can come here and explain this slide deck or draw this out and replicate this slide over here from the slide deck, then it means that you're on the right path and you can explain how the bonding occurs um, within the BCL3 molecule um, with it being sp2. Uh, and so here you can also draw a balloon representation or an orbital representation diagram where you can show the um, sp3, um, sp2 um, uh, orbitals from the boron overlapping with the single electrons from the uh, chlorine, and you'll show that they have opposite spins. And in the end, this translates to 120 degree bond angles. And that hybridization is important to show because it is what gives you the proper bond angles and shape based on the overlap of these newly shaped orbitals. And so you can try the example out with uh, BF3. Um, and again, here you can see SP2 forming. And when you connect them all together here, you have the 120 degree bond angles. Um, then we saw sp3 hybridization, where you have one s and three p's, um, and when they combine, they form four sp3, 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 sp3. SP3. Uh, when you put them together here, they form that 109.5 uh, degree bond angle, um, characteristic of the tetrahedral. And so we can see that over here. Uh, and to form this, you're basically combining your s and your P together uh, and your three P's together to make SP3s all the way around. So SP3, 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 SP3. And there is some intermediate level between the S and the P over here. And you should be able to explain hybridization SP3 um, in molecules such as CH4 using uh, orbital diagrams, uh, energy level diagrams, and really explaining where all the different bonds come from, um, including sigma bonds. Uh, and so here we have our orbital representation, representation diagram between the sp3 uh, electrons of carbon and then the s electrons of hydrogen. And then uh, another example of sp3 that you can 
draw or should be able to draw is H2O and other molecules as well. But it's great to come and practice this one here um, because you have a nice answer key provided to you and you can see how the animation works, uh, how the uh, illustration compares to what you're able to draw. And then you can try NH3, which we did in our notes already. And you can see here, this is the SP3 um, arrangement. Once you combine these, you get these. And if you connect all these together, you get your 109.5 degree bond angles. Then there's also SP3D. Uh, so you can do practice problems with that. But essentially, the way it works is you combine 1S, 3Ps, and 2Ds. And you get um, this shape over here. So you get your hybrid orbitals combined here and you get an oct it's an octahedral shape, just to clarify. So you get an octahedral structure. And so to do that, what you wanna do is essentially you need to combine 1S, 3Ps and 2Ds. And so when you, when you merge those together or hybridize them, you get your SP3, D2, and then three of them remain unhybridized. And you can try a couple examples like we saw in our notes, but you can try the PCL5 and you can also try the XE F4 as well. Um, you can try the PF5, which is done for you over here, but you can um, try it on your own, draw it out, and then come and double check your work in, in the uh, area below. You can also try other examples. So explain the hybridization XE F2, um, and you can watch this video lesson over here to, um, to go over it if you need additional support. Um, and then you can see some answer keys provided there as well. You can try SF6 for the SP3 um, D2 done for you over here, but try it by hand and see if you can compare to that um, SF6 as well. So do a variety of examples to make sure that you understand um, how to explain hybridization or explain bonding using hybridization and valence bond theory. Not everything actually needs hybridization to explain bonding. Um, these are some examples here. So central atoms of these molecules don't really need hybridization. Technically, you don't really need to show hybridization for um, diatomic halogens or other diatomic molecules like H2 um, and um, O2, you do need to show it though, but uh, diatomic molecules with single bonds only, um, you don't really need to, um, to show hybridization because you have enough electrons um, to, to, to do the bonding and single electrons do bonding. And also they're usually at the ends of the molecule. They're not really the central atom itself. It's really more important for the central atom usually. Um, so typically you don't have to show hybridization for these, but it is important to know how to do it if you need to. So if I show you to, if I tell you to explain, um, uh, bonding of CL2 using hybridization and valence bond theory, you should be able to do that. Um, anyways, so don't worry about memorizing this slide. It's just understand that we don't always have to use the model of hybridization. Sometimes valence bond theory without hybridization can explain the bonding with the right bond angles as well. It's just not always the case. Um, but the rules to determine um, uh, when and when you don't need to uh, use hybridization, they're called Drago's rules. Um, and um, we don't really need to, uh, to worry about that though right now. It's just kind of above what we need to know. Just know that there are rules out there that determine when you need to know, when you need to use them, when you don't need to use them.